In this video, we are going to talk about the DAISY function in R which is a part of the cluster package. This function allows us to find the distance between rows when the variables in the data are not in the same format. Till now in this course, I have told you the clustering techniques that can be followed for different kinds of data. But we are yet to take into consideration those data that have a mix of variables including numeric, binary and nominal variables. DAISY function is capable of handling such data types. Once you pass a data to DAISY function, it would return a distance matrix that signifies the distance between each of the rows. Using this distance matrix, you can then apply a preferred clustering method. One thing to note is that you would not be able to apply k-means clustering method on the output of DAISY function. This is because k-means function cannot cluster the data on the basis of the distance matrix. So if you wish to cluster the data using the distance matrix, you are essentially left with a choice between hierarchical form of clustering or k-midoids clustering. I will shortly show you how to cluster the data using the output from the DAISY function. For now, I want to talk about the Gower measure. DAISY function uses a Gower measure for calculating the distance between rows that contain mixed data. When you present a data to the DAISY function, it looks for the data type of each of the columns. If the function finds mixed data, then it automatically selects Gower measure for finding distance between rows. After this, the Gower measure would apply a suitable distance measuring technique that corresponds with the data type of the columns. For numeric data, Gower measure uses the Manhattan distance. Similarly, for binary or nominal data, Gower measure would use the dice coefficient in order to calculate the distance between rows. Also, since nominal data cannot be directly used for clustering, Gower metric would first convert it to binary data. All this would happen in the background, so we don't need to make any changes to the nominal variable R cells. If you still wish to understand the conversion process from nominal to binary data, we have covered it in an earlier video. Moving on, Gower measure can also handle ordinal data. For ordinal data, Gower measure would first convert the ranking data to simple ranks starting from 1 and then use the Manhattan measure to calculate the distance between such rows. Now once the Gower measure has calculated the distance between rows based on their data type, it brings all the distances together to create a single value that represents the distance between any two rows. So suppose that a random data has 3 numeric, 3 binary and 1 nominal variable. And we are using the Gower method to find the distance between the first and the second row of this data. The Gower measure would first calculate the distance for all the columns on the basis of their data type. The distance values calculated by the Gower measure are then needed to be combined such that we are left with a single value that represents the distance between the first and the second row. In order to combine these distances, the Gower metric uses the weightage of the variables. For instance, if the nominal column in this data was converted to 5 binary columns, then the combined weightage of these 5 binary columns would remain 1, since they were all formed using a single variable. This way, using the weightage concept, we would be left with a single value that represents the distance between the first and the second row. One more thing. DAISY function has an argument called metric which can be set to distance measures such as Euclidean and Manhattan. Using this argument, you can tell the function to calculate distance between rows using a chosen distance measure. However, if the data is of mixed type, the distance measure would automatically become Gower and the metric argument given by you would be ignored. All this explanation was done to make you familiarize with the DAISY function. Inside R, you simply have to type a few line of codes to get the distance between each row in your data. We will demonstrate the use of DAISY function with the help of two examples. Both these data sets have a mix of variables including numeric, binary and nominal columns. And therefore, they are an ideal choice for displaying the use of the DAISY function. 
First, we will apply this function on the IMDb dataset that has details of 5043 movies listed on the IMDb portal. You can download this file from the following location. First, we will load the data to R. After this, let's look at the output of the string function. We will shortlist some of these variables and make the required changes in them so that they can be correctly read and used by the daisy function. First off, we will save all the numeric and integer variables in a new R object data1. Apart from this numeric data, we would also include a few binary and nominal columns in data1. If you look at the column named color, it is binary with two entries, black and white and color. Another column content rating is nominal with more than two entries inside it. We will include both these columns in data1. This way, now our data has a mix of numeric, binary and nominal data inside it. Let's remove all the rows with empty cells inside them. We will then draw a sample of 100 rows from the remaining data of 3801 rows. Let's look at the data for a moment. We need to correct the column names of the 1st, 18th and the 19th column. Plus the names of the movies in the first column are not making sense because of the special characters. Let's correct the column names and remove the special characters from the first column. After this, let's quickly look at the output of the string function. As you can see, every column seems to be stored in the correct format. Now we will use the daisy function to find the distance between each of the rows in this data of 100 rows. As you can see, inside the daisy function, I have set the metric argument to govern. But keep in mind that it was not required. I have added this argument just for reference. Whenever you provide a data to daisy function that has several data types in it, it will automatically set the metric to govern. Moving on, I have saved the results from the daisy function in movie distance. If you want to save the result to your local disk, then you first need to convert it to a matrix. If you now look at this matrix, it has a total of 100 rows and 100 columns. Each entry inside represents the distance between any two given rows in this data. We can refer to this result as the distance matrix or dissimilarity matrix. So now we have the distance between each row in this data. But we are yet to divide this data into clusters. We need a clustering technique that can take the output from the daisy function and based on that divide the data into clusters. As already explained in the beginning, k-means function is incapable of handling such kind of outputs. k-means can only work on the actual data for dividing the data into clusters. So we are left with two options. We can either cluster this data using hierarchical clustering or k-midoids clustering. Both these clustering techniques can use the output from the daisy function to divide our data into clusters. For the current example, I am going to implement k-midoids clustering using the pam function. Inside the pam function, I am going to add an argument dis and set it to true. This argument would tell the function that instead of the actual data, we are providing it with the dissimilarity matrix. Now let's look at the third argument. I have randomly decided to divide this data into four clusters. After this, I have attached the cluster number of each of the rows with the data. We can now analyze the clustering results using a variety of methods. For instance, I have used the aggregate function to calculate mean of three columns in this data based on their cluster. Let's implement one of the methods that we have learned in the last few videos for determining the right number of clusters for this data. As an example, let's use the silhouette method on this data. First, we have defined a variable average silhouette. I have then asked the for loop function to return the value of average silhouette for cluster numbers varying from 2 to 10. If you now look at the result, you can see that the value for average silhouette is the highest when the number of clusters are 4. We can also make a plot to show this change in the value of average silhouette with increasing number of clusters. So based on the results of average silhouette, we don't need to redo the clustering process. Our initial assessment that the data should be divided into 4 clusters is correct. We can also say 
that the four clusters are well distinguished from each other. Now we are going to look at one more data set on which we are going to use the daisy function. You can download this data set from the following location on the Kaggle website. First we will remove all the active objects in R using the rm function. Let's load the data to R and analyze the columns inside it using the various functions. Based on the output of string and table function, we can see that two columns, left and promotion last five years, should ideally be considered binary instead of integers. Similarly, another column time spent company should be considered nominal and not integer. We will therefore resave these three columns as factors. Now we would take a sample of 100 rows from this data. Needless to say, I am drawing a sample because I want to be able to explain the results in a simpler manner. You can obviously use the whole data instead of a sample for the purpose of clustering. After this, I have used the daisy function to generate the dissimilarity matrix. This time, I would use hierarchical clustering to cluster this data. Under this form of clustering, I have several choices including single, complete, average and VARD method. I will explain one of them and rest of them you can understand for yourself. So as you can see, I am using the complete linkage form of hierarchical clustering to cluster this data. As the first argument to h plus function, I am providing HR distance. HR distance has the dissimilarity matrix generated from the daisy function. I can now plot the clustering results to determine the ideal number of clusters for this data. Based on the dendogram, I will use the cut tree function to divide this data into four clusters. After this, I have saved the cluster number of each of the rows with the data. We can now analyze the clustering results. For instance, I am using the aggregate function to find the mean of four columns in this data based on the cluster they belong to. You can also use the various methods that we have learned in the past videos for determining the right number of clusters for this data. But I'm sure you can do it for yourself, so we will move on. If you look at the rest of the codes, I have used the single, average and VARTI linkage form of hierarchical clustering to cluster this data. You can take reference of these codes to understand their implementation. Now that we have understood the daisy function, we can now cluster any form of data, no matter what mix of variables are inside it.